Hello, welcome back to my channel. This is Louise from Louise's Lifestyle. Thank you for joining me. Today we're looking at the seed sown uh, plants that um, Bangladeshi vegetables that I've grown um, very late in the season. I started them off in April when I should have started them off in January, which is the best time. And um, has it been worth growing them this late in the season? So we're just going to nip to the greenhouse and show you the plants right so here is my greenhouse i've got my bangladeshi vegetables and inside here they're all planted from seed so these are the seeds that i brought back from bangladesh in march mid-march i didn't get around to planting them till april because of um, my husband was in hospital uh, for a month so things got delayed and normally would have planted these seeds in January and that would extend you know the growing season because it's very short growing season here in the UK so these are what I have planted this Bangladeshi Kudu which is this plant here there's a couple of plants in in the one pot there. Should be in a larger pot. Uh, the aubergine are out in the front. I'll show those in a minute. And these are the seeds. The Bangladeshi Kudu. I'll just drop the label there. Just pick that up. And these are the hyacinth beans. I've planted two types. The Uri or Sim. And they are these plants here. So I say we should normally plant these in January. So in August, which is what we're in now, we'd be harvesting um, the beans off these plants. But I say I'm about three months behind everyone else. Um, yeah, so everyone that I you know subscribe to uh, who grow Bangladeshi kudu or lao bottle gourd harvesting great big bottle gourds now and i'm just getting flowers um so there's a male flower there so hopefully it'll start producing female i think we start with the male flowers first and then uh, you get female flowers after so i'll start pinching off the tops of these and hopefully that will produce uh, more flowers and these are the beans the um, so these are what uh, these are. Just need to put that down. So one variety, I think, is this one here. It's got the dark purple stem. So I think this is the one that produces the uh, purple flowers. So these are the beans. Hopefully, I'll get from it. I think it's starting to produce little flower buds I think I'm not sure I did grow a uh, hyacinth bean last year at my friend's allotment and uh, had quite a good crop off there but uh, and and actually I didn't start those off until April either so you know um, with them being inside a, a greenhouse maybe I've got more chance you know so if we get an early frost let's hope we don't get an early frost but in September it can happen um, they'll be in here and hopefully um, there'll be enough insects around you know like hoverflies etc to pollinate you know uh, whatever fl flowers female flowers hopefully um, you do need female and male for a lot of these um, like this Bangladeshi uh, Kodu see that one there had a had a male flower on it it's just shriveled up because obviously it won't produce anything and also I've got a uh, Corella so let me see if I can find the Corella seeds and I did have some well I've grown these from seed I'll see if I can find the, the seeds I can show what 
Corolla seeds look like, bitter gourd, bitter melon. This did have quite a few flowers on it during the heat wave, but I think they've fallen off because they were all male flowers. So hopefully now it'll start producing female flowers. And as I say, we're in August now. I probably, fingers crossed that, you know, September is warm and sunny and, you know, it stands a chance of producing some uh, bitter gourd or bitter melon and over here I've got uh, this isn't a Bangladeshi plant this is um, a watermelon uh, I think it's sugar rush uh, sugar rush um, watermelon and this has got a tiny little it did produce a couple of tiny watermelons that fell off and there is one there actually so Let's see how this gets on. Hopefully, I'll get one watermelon. I've never had a watermelon grow for me before. I've tried to grow it in the past, but never, you know, successfully got anything off it. So, that's the watermelon. And these are Bangladeshi cucumbers. And I think I've got one, yep, yeah, there it is, one cucumber. Uh, a lot of these flowers, I think, are, are, are male flowers. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, I think they look like male flowers. It does need, um, you know, it's the leaves are a bit yellow, so I have given them a bit of um, nitrogen feed, miracle Grow. Uh, so hopefully the leaves will green up a little bit. So these leaves are looking, you know, a little bit better than the ones down here and it, it was outside um, in the hot sun it don't they don't seem to like the heat so they're in here and hopefully I'll get some cucumbers off it and down here I've got this is pottle um, trichosanthes diosa um, pointed gourd so a lot of people uh, Bangladeshi people who grow what they call Chinese pottle. That isn't pottle. That's that's a completely different uh, type of gourd altogether. This is a perennial. The first year you grow it from seed, it will just produce leaves, and the following year it will grow. It'll continue to grow. It won't die off. It won't die off like these. Um, so all these are just going to die off uh, in winter. But this will continue to grow. And hopefully, if I keep it in a frost-free environment, um, it'll get bigger. And next year, I'll have some pointed gourd or pottle. Uh, what else have I got? Oh, I've got some data or amaranth. I had loads of this, you know, I had tons of it sown. Um, and then the slugs and snails uh, got, got to the... I've got a larger one outside in the front, so I'll film that. And um, and my aubergines are out at the front as well, so I did plant uh, some aubergines. I'll just see. There it is. I've got the. So I've planted these, and they're out at the front. So we'll have a look at what they're doing. And what else? Oh yes, I said I'd get the um, bitter gourd seeds out. I'll just find them. All right. So these are the bitter gourd. So that's the seeds. Uh, it's quite hard. They've got quite a hard shell, um, so a bit tricky to germinate. Not the easiest to germinate. Sometimes you have to clip the shell um, to allow you know moisture to get in. Uh, so yeah, not the easiest to germinate. So lots of corolla seeds there. In fact, I brought back a ton of seeds. I've got loads. <laughs> Um, the amaranth, tons of amaranth seeds, so, you know, that's that, those are these, so I had tons of those and the slugs and snails have had a good feast on them. Down here I've got my Malabar spinach and I've got one red variety and the rest are all green. I had tons of plants which I've sold or given away. Um, so this is small enough to 
be brought back inside and it will it will grow as a vine it will vine like these cucumbers um, but I'm not you know I'm not too mithered about whether that will continue to grow bigger or not because they're very easy to grow from seed and um, as I say I can keep that indoors I've grown that indoors before now but these other plants they do need to uh, be kept in here to extend the growing season um, because when it comes to September it starts to get a bit cooler uh, they will need uh, you know to to keep you know continue growing in a warmer environment so I'm going to nip round the front and show you the uh, aubergines and the amaranth so outside now with the um, aubergine plants, so these are the Bangladeshi variety, they weren't very good at germinating, very very slow and very poor rate, uh, out of 20 uh, I've only got these two, but they are starting to produce flowers, so hopefully they'll catch up, I can always pop them in the greenhouse, uh, you know, to speed up that process, and I did buy um, sort of um, an aubergine plant or well, a couple black bell improved from my local plant nursery and they this one has happily produced lots of uh, nice healthy aubergines that I'm going to pick soon uh, I love the black stems on this and contrasting with the lovely purple flowers so aubergines are doing well there and the Bangladeshi ones are playing catch up and I've got some Bangladeshi Naga that I planted and this is one of them, I think it is because I've mislaid the label so I must get better at labelling my plants so this one's look a bit narrow but whether these will fill out and become you know the more Naga-ish shape we'll just have to see and also down here I've got some bird's eye chilies these are a Thai bird's eye very very slow growing so I think I will pop this one in the greenhouse um, to get it to produce a little bit faster so I do want to get some nice hot bird's eye chilies off that down here I think is my only Carolina Reaper only just started to produce little pods uh, or buds I should say not changed the pot it's quite a slow grower um, all these should have been planted earlier um, and probably would have had chilies on them by now. This is the Wraith chili, um, uh, white naga. So uh, I did get a fresh pods last year off my friend Susan and it's just starting to put little flower buds out there. So I'm looking forward to that one producing chilies. All of these can go in the greenhouse, you know, um, when the weather starts to get a bit cooler this is a plant i bought ready well it didn't have the pods or flowers on it but it was a, an established plant chenzo so it's a nice black chili there and um, what have we behind here oh yes this is the amaranth or dugi or data and um, it's got lovely lovely brownish red leaves which are all edible it is going to seed though so you know it does need to be cut back and um, I've got some okra I've got some bindi these are Bangladeshi variety and they have produced some nice pods and uh, I didn't get around to repotting them you know they should have been in a bigger pot but I'm busy with other things and these are lots of surplus uh, Bangladeshi kudu or bangalau I did sell quite a lot of these and these are the ones that are left over so I never I never got round to taking them out of the little tiny pots they were in and last but not least is tomato plant money maker which is cropping really well so thank you very much for watching if you've got any comments about my Bangladeshi veg leave them in the comments below bye bye